Greetings and welcome to Miracles Now. This is Bishop Courtney McLean. Want to wish for you a blessed and prosperous 2015. I believe with all my heart that this year is pregnant with breakthroughs. It's pregnant with deliverance. The heavens are literally filled and they are awaiting your prayer, awaiting your fast, awaiting your financial seed. It is your prayer, your fasting, and your seed that will cause the clouds to be filled and then to burst with fresh wine and fresh release from heaven. Listen to me. I know you have been waiting. I know many of you, you have been fasting and you have been giving. But I believe when I examine God's word, it is clear to me that 2015 is the year of deliverance. And if you believe it, if you would raise your expectations, you'd be shocked at what God would do in your life. My God, I'm excited. Now you need to understand that we generally begin our year with 21 days of fast. Starting from the 11th, we will be meeting every night, 7 p.m. And on Saturdays, it will be 6 a.m. We're going to end on the 30th with an all-night prayer meeting. You need to record these dates. They're at the bottom of your screen. And I'm pretty, pretty sure that God is just going to bless us in a tremendous way as we position ourselves in prayer, in fasting, and by releasing our first fruit, God honors sacrifice now let me tell you one of the challenges that i'm having people are not consistent if you would be consistent you would experience god's glory and god's best the bible says the faithful man shall abound with blessings if you are not abounding with blessings it is indicative of the fact that you are not yet faithful work on your faithfulness work on your consistency and you'd be shocked at how god would bless you this year again i say this is the year of greater glory and it's pregnant with your miracle pregnant with your release before we go into the day's message which is the blessing is stronger than the curse we're going to take a testimony and we're going to also look at upcoming events i'll be back with you a little bit um we did a first fruit at one point and my husband and myself you know we gave all that we had left when i mean when we checked out the amount for the first fruit it turned out to be all that we would have had and we gave it and down in the month when you know we weren't able to purchase our groceries because we gave that first fruit sacrificially and i mean i was doing praise and worship and when i came down the aisle somebody stopped me and she gave me a note and when i read it it said write a grocery list of all that you needed and i was so shocked but i went through there and i said okay she said a grocery list but she didn't say meat so i won't put any meat on the list and would you believe that when i came back in church the person came back to me and gay and and whispered in my ears and the meat that you need as well i i was just so taken up i mean God is just an awesome God. And when you, when you give to God, he is no man's debtor. I'm telling you that he is going to give back to you. Our 21 days of fasting begins on the 9th of January and goes right through to the 30th with an all-night prayer meeting on the 30th. You need to mark this in your calendar because we will be meeting every single night for 21 days. Oh my God, I feel it already. And our annual debt burning service will be February the 1st. Mighty God of Daniel, Jesus have mercy. The testimonies have been coming in. And I'm telling you, it's your time to testify because God is going to meet you at your point of need. The blessing is stronger than the curse. That's my topic tonight. I don't care what kind of curse they want to put upon you. The blessing. Jesus have mercy. I don't care who try to obey you. The blessing. I don't care who want bad mind you. The blessing. 
I don't care if you enter your family curse. The blessing is stronger than the curse. Lift your hand and praise God tonight. Now let me bring it down a little bit. Because in Romans chapter 9 and verse 13, we see the Lord speaking. And he said, Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. He said, this no sound right. It's my year of double favor. And, and I'm reading some scriptures. I mean, I understand. Can't just pick out one part and just, mm, no, no. I've got to look at the whole thing. He said, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. In 1 Samuel 2, from 27 through to 36, we see where the Lord accepted Samuel, but rejected Eli. And I'm saying, no man. Why is it that some people are accepted and some people are rejected? Why is it that we, we, we are speaking and declaring, no, this is the year of double favor. And why is it that even though some people speak it and they declare it, they might not necessarily walk in it? Uh oh. Don't go nowhere now. Stay with me. Say amen. amen. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 18 to 19, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches. Why did he say to the Philippian church and not the church in Galatia or Corinth? Why? Why, why, why did he say it? it seems as if God is partial? Why is this church doing well and another church is suffering and can't break through? God partial, eh? God prefer us above every other church. Why is it that some people struggle right through life and never break through? while others seem to thrive and flourish. Have you ever wondered why? No, 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 no. I, I, I could go on and on and build my case. I, I'm not here to tell you stories. I'm here to build a case. I'm here to build a case. And if the evidence proves it, then we can pass the verdict. Say amen. Now, when you look at Acts, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, 34 and 35, it says, God is not partial, but in every nation. So some people say you're preaching an American prosperity gospel. God is not partial, but in every nation. Come on, somebody. I said, come on, somebody. I'm reading this book entitled Out of Africa. And some of the mega churches are being built in Africa right now as they embrace principles of God's word. It doesn't matter where you are, the word works if you work it. Come on, somebody, you could be in Haiti. I said, when God bless you, you're blessed. Oh, Jesus, once the spirit and the anointing of Joseph is upon you, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where they put you. You are going to flourish. You are going to prosper. They can't stop you because if God for you oh help me praise God a little bit somebody lift up your voice and help me praise God a little bit so it says God is not partial but in every nation the man that fears him and works righteousness is what acceptable to him so God will accept the man that fears him and works I could work this in a man I could work this and works 
righteousness bible says he has distributed to the poor corinthians ah oh, jesus have mercy your righteousness endure it forever what's righteousness cornelius was a man who prayed cornelius was a man who fasted and cornelius was a man who gave to god's people and god said your righteousness endures forever this is the context that this scripture comes from pray fast and he gave and the favor hit his life somebody say amen, amen. join bishop courtney mclean at central tabernacle deliverance center for three powerful nights january 5th 6th and 7th 2015 at 7 p.m nightly central tabernacle deliverance center 91 Great George's Street, Savlamar, Westmoreland. The Cross Country Revival 2015 is here. It begins at the Jamaica Evangelistic Center, 86 E Walton Park Road, Kingston, Jamaica, with Bishop Courtney McLean and Dr. V.T. Williams. The dates are from January 18 to the 21st, 2015, at 7 p.m. nightly. The Bible says when the Son of God returns, will he find faith in the earth? Will you keep believing God? Will you keep pressing in for greater levels and dimensions of glory? Or will you faint and lose heart? If you are one of those who are still believing God, you are believing him for miracles, believing him for healing, believing him for the supernatural in your life. I want for you to join me for the first hour of our service for 2015, this Wednesday. I am believing God that he is going to show up and manifest his glory in our lives. Be seated by 11.45. You don't want to miss it. Now let's look at this man called Jacob. Now because Esau didn't value the principle of first fruit. Somebody say first fruit principle. That means giving God what? The first. Say first. Come on, shout it like you mean it. The first. So you give God the first thought of your day. <laughs> hey, I'm pushing this first fruit thing, you know. Better take it to a level where we never see it before. You, when, when, before your foot touch the ground, you meditate upon God. You give him your first thought. Before your foot touch the ground, you start love upon him. Because you're giving him your first hour. Your first thought of the day causes him to protect your mind for the rest of the day. Your first hour of the day causes him to preserve your full day. Your first day of the week belongs to God and it causes him to protect you and to preserve you for the balance of the week. Come on somebody. Your first month of the year belongs to God and it causes God to preserve and to watch over the rest of the year. Watch this. He said because Esau ignored the first fruit principle. Watch this. Stay with me. The first child was considered what? First fruit. And I'm going to show it to you in a little bit. So the first child was considered first fruit. Somebody say first fruit. Again, the first child was considered first fruit. And I'm going to give you the biblical reference a little bit from now. Hence, that child belonged to whom? So when Anna said in 1 Samuel, um, if you give me a man child, I'm giving him to you. It was according to the principles and the order of God already. Because the first child belongs to God. Somebody stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. So the first child belongs to God. Now that first child of Isaac was who? Esau. And the second child was Jacob. But while Esau was coming out of the womb, Jacob was 
latching on to his heel because Jacob realized let me tell you intrinsically some stuff can happen and you have to learn when to seize the moment and grab on to opportunity oh my god hey 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 something is about to happen there's a reason why Saul is playing the fool something is about to happen God is about to make a switch in somebody's life are you listening to me are you listening to me I, I said are you hearing me So intrinsically, it's like Jacob could sense opportunity from the womb. And God loves people who can smell opportunity. God loves people who don't waste opportunity. God loves people who learn how to seize, 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 grasp, lay hold on the moment. Just like tonight, I believe there's a moment that we're going to seize tonight. Is anybody with the preacher? Come on, give the Lord a shout if you're with me. So the child Esau was the first child. But to prove that he didn't value the principle of first fruit, he sold his, he sold his right to be first. That's what birthright is. His right to be first. Because the first child would take over from the father and carry on the lineage the lineage the first child would take over when the father died and he would inherit most of the father's possessions possession the first child was also responsible to take care of the mother after the death of the father come on somebody the first child was actually responsible to take care of the sisters until they have been married they get married and come out of the place the first child was endowed with the responsibility of standing and representing the family and carrying the family name and carrying on but 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 he didn't value he didn't value the first fruit principle so much so so much so so much so that he sold it for one measly bowl of soup Sold out his birthright. One bowl of soup. God said, I hate that. So there was a switch because Jacob understood the principle of first things. He said, I'm going to give you this soup, but I don't think you deserve it. You really don't understand God. You don't understand biblical principles. And so I'm going to give you the soup if you give me your birthright. Come on, somebody. You might say he was a schemer. He was a general. But God recognized him as one that could smell opportunity and had respect for things that God also had respect for. And God said, no, you are no longer number two. You are no number one. I want to preach to somebody all the years of your life you're playing number two all the years of your life you're second I've come to tell you there's about to be a switch in the building I don't know who I'm preaching to or maybe I'm prophesying to somebody there's a radical turn in your immediate future somebody tell your neighbor you're looking at the new number one. <laughs> now, 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 why? Why did God say to Eli, you honor your sons above me and Samuel will take over from you? Why? Because Eli refused to stop his sons from taking the first of the sacrifice before it went up to God. What ever offerings were collected, the priests were told not to work. The Levites weren't supposed to have any portion in the inheritance because the Lord was their inheritance, which means whatever comes in would also take care of the priests. But they shouldn't touch it until it burned and the smoke goes up to God. But Eli's sons, when the people brought the sacrifice, they come with a long fork. And as the people put it in on the cadran, in on the big pot, 
them just juke it and take it out raw. Them just juke it and take it out. The people them say, just wait and make it cook first so at least the smoke and the fragrance can go up to God because God now go come down and eat it. But that smoke that goes up to him is a sacrifice that he honors and he accepts. Them say, no, we want it raw. We want it now. And if the people wouldn't give them, then take it by force. Eli spoke to them, but he didn't stop them. And God said, you, Eli, you put your sons above me. You stop me from getting the first. And because of that, I changed my mind concerning you. I had a prophecy concerning you that you and your sons will be before me forever. But I changed my mind. Jesus have mercy, man. Don't make God change in mind concerning you. I said there are some prophecies over my life and prophecies over your life. And when you release the first today, 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 all those of you who have released it already, the prophecies will be Activated. God said, no man, I'm not going to change my mind concerning this one because they understand the principle. God said, Eli, I changed my mind concerning you. I'm going to put it upon Samuel because Samuel is the first born and Anna sowed her first. Jesus have mercy. And so it leaves one who disrespect the first fruit principle and was now up on one who was himself a first fruit offering. Am I working? I'm working the thing. I'm, I'm, I said, I'm working. Somebody tell anybody that the preacher is working the thing. In Philippians, he said to the Philippian church, Jesus have mercy. Let me go back to Eli. He says, he says, he says, Eli, you honor your sons above me. He said, those who honor me, I, the Lord, will honor. What does Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 say? Honor the Lord with thy what? With your substance. Not just with your lips. Three quarters of the church love make noise, but when it comes to giving, them no one give God nothing. You have to understand that when you release, you're honoring God with your substance. Too many people honor God with their lips, but the heart not with him. Wherever your money is, that's where your treasure is also. If you put your money in a church, then your heart in a church. If you put your money in a God's work, then your heart is in God's work. Say amen. You cannot pay for a miracle. You cannot pay for a soul. See them guys here, me keep talking about this man. Come here again, man of God. Come here. Half a million dollar surgery he was supposed to do on his back. Came crying in church when we were up by the club. Crying. God spoke to me. I didn't know what was happening to him. And I felt what he was feeling. I called him out. I said, God is healing your back. And I give him one big lick. I'm serious. He fell on his back. That's fate. It's either fate or foolishness we're going to send me to prison. It was fate. By the following day, he got up, he couldn't find the pain. <laughs> couldn't find the pain. Went back to the doctors, they checked. Everything is all right. Don't need no operation for no half a million dollars. When you sow your tithes and your offerings in the church and your pastor don't have to go do a nine to five and stress out himself, he can lie down in his presence, in, 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 at his home, in the presence of the Lord and come out with a fresh word and fresh faith to lift you up from where you are. Come on, somebody. This man, come here, man. They killed his brother. He got saved and shocked after that they killed his brother. He might have access to gun. People carrying gun to say, But 
because him get saved and the brothers from the church were hanging around him and, and pulling him and said, don't go back where you come from. Don't go back into the thing that you used to in. It's not worth it, my youth. Remember, you have your pity them for live. Stand up in the thing. Come on. Don't tell me that the church no make no sense. Don't tell me that the church no work. your money in the kingdom you're honoring God you're honoring the system and you're allowing the system to push you're strengthening the system more people getting saved less bloodshed them say the church now nah, don't listen to me oh no no oh no no mess with me tonight oh no no ramp with me tonight the church nah. if, if the church wasn't here you can imagine how worse it would be because I know quite a few con men who put on the gun, come on to somebody and start serve God because of the church. I know quite a few people who still have their two breasts intact and never have to cut it off because of the church. I know quite a few people who didn't have to do the hysterectomy because of the church. Wave your hand and praise God. Lift up your hand and worship the Lord. To honor God is to honor Him with your substance. It means to put Him first. To hold Him in esteem. And that's what Hannah did. And that's what Eli didn't do. One was accepted, and the other rejected. The word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. My God, I know that you were challenged by this word, and I am still blessed by it. Uh, uh, God has been just provoking my spirit in terms of what he wants to do in our lives. Don't settle for where you are. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 2, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Listen, man, stretch forth your curtains, stretch forth your stakes. It is your time. But God cannot bless you until you have lifted your level of thinking, until you allow that word to take root in your heart and to bring that level of transformation to the way that you think so that it can change your life. I want to pray with you. You must join me this month as we fast, pray, and position ourselves for greater glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people, and I pray, Lord God, that your touch would come upon them. I know many are being tried, many are being tested, so many difficult things happening in their lives. But I rebuke principalities and powers, and I thank you that this is the year of increase, the year of greater glory, and the year of overflow. Manifest and do for them what they cannot do for themselves. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to also thank all of you. Who have been partnering with us supporting us and helping us we do believe that your support has helped us to make a tremendous difference a tremendous impact impact and so many lives i want for you to continue to support us by getting the message that was just aired or ordering one of our messages or sowing into this ministry and watch god bless you now if you're in a position where you're not able to purchase today's message. If you would call us and give us your information, we will send it to you free of cost. Or if you would send us an email at wafifglory at gmail.com and request the message, we will send it to you because we want to sow in your life. Indeed, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Remember, irrespective of where you are, this is the year of greater glory. And God can take you from zero to hero. God bless you. Bye-bye. For prayer and more information, give us a call at 774-3369. That's 774-3369.